Now, Israel has crippled hospitals and medical infrastructure in the Gaza Strip through a recurring pattern of attacks. Let's bring in Dr Nick Maynard, who's a consultant upper gastrointestinal surgeon at Oxford University Hospitals and who spent two weeks in Gaza just last month. He joins me live on the line from Oxford. Um, welcome, Nick. I, I particularly appreciate speaking to medical professionals, um, not only because they can offer a first-hand perspective like this, um, but they leave the politics aside when, when you're talking about alleviating human suffering. So I really appreciate particularly speaking to you. Um, from your experience out in, in the region, if I just refer to today's story of, of five people dying in an intensive care unit at, at NASA hospital um, because of a military raid that, that left the basic things like power being cut off, is, is that something you have any experience with? Yes, in the sense that, I mean, we're seeing exactly what happened in... Shifa Hospital. I wasn't in Shifa Hospital recently. I was there last year, but I spoke to colleagues and friends on the ground in the early part of this military assault when Shifa was undergoing exactly what NASA Hospital is undergoing now. Uh, and we're seeing the same things unfold. We're seeing people being murdered, patients being murdered in the hospitals by the ventilators being turned off. We saw that in Shifa. We will see babies dying because the incubators are no longer uh, have a power supply. And uh, I fear this will get worse. I witnessed it directly when I was in Al-Aqsa Hospital, when I was working there a few weeks ago in Deir Abala, when there was a military assault on the intensive care unit when I was there. Thankfully, it didn't escalate beyond that. And, and we didn't see then what we're seeing in NASA Hospital. But... Uh, these scenes are utterly appalling. I've had direct contact with doctors in NASA over the last 72 hours, and what they are describing are the, the most appalling scenes one can possibly imagine. I'm, I'm just trying very hard to rationalise this now because I know soldiers, many people will know people in military forces and will, will understand they're not monsters, they're people doing a job, but... When these soldiers are coming in um, and then they realise that through their actions there are patients who are suffering, uh, have you had any sense that the, the, that the Israeli military are doing something to try and help those, those patients, to try and um, do something to undo the consequences of their actions? Uh, no evidence whatsoever. I know they are claiming to be providing humanitarian aid and to protect patients and medical staff, but there is not one shred of evidence they're doing so. They certainly didn't at Shifa Hospital. Um, I have seen overwhelming amount of evidence of patients and staff being killed at Shifa, and we are seeing it over the last 72, 96 hours in NASA Hospital. So there is no credibility to the claims by the Israelis that they are trying to protect patients and medical staff. I have to ask you this, because this is the argument that uh, the Israeli military gives as to why they carry out these raids on, on medical facilities. They say that Hamas uh, militants are hiding out in there, sometimes even using uh, patients as, as, as human shield. From your experience, from, from the doctors you know, uh, do you believe there's any truth to that? I, I can only talk about my own personal experience of being in these hospitals on many occasions um, and talking to friends and colleagues on the ground currently whom I have known for years and trust implicitly, and I have not heard or seen any credible evidence to support those claims. The caveat being, of course, that I've no idea what's going on in any tunnels, because I've never been in the tunnels, but certainly on the ground in the hospitals, I have not seen any evidence of Hamas militants, either from talking to friends and colleagues or with my own eyes in the hospitals I've been in. As I said, it, it's very hard to try and rationalise the reports that we get about, you know, innocent victims, the public being moaned moan down, uh, people being killed while they're re receiving treatment in hospitals. Uh, even the UN said, very, it was very early on in this conflict, but their estimates were that two-thirds of the people who were killed in Gaza have been women and children. Um, I mean, does that sound like a reasonable estimate to you? Absolutely. When I was at Al-Aqsa Hospital over Christmas and New Year until mid-January, uh, I saw far more injured and dead children and women than I did men. Um, we saw the most appalling scenes, the, the huge numbers of small children being brought in, fatally injured or 
with death imminent from their injuries. So multiple traumatic amputations, children coming in with one, two, sometimes three limbs amputated, awful burns down to the bones, the children that we, who were alive but we knew would have no chance of survival. Uh, I operated on more women than men during my time at al and I spent the whole time operating on serious blast injuries to the abdomen and the chest. So th that statistic of two-thirds being women and children is entirely credible. Nick, once again, I think it's so important just to get first-hand perspectives from people who've, who've been there, so I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Um, Nick Maynard is my guest. He's a consultant upper gastrointestinal surgeon at Oxford University Hospitals.